Stereo Madness is impossible because I just installed a mod that removes every portal. In this challenge, I have to get 1000 stars with just a cube that jumps, which usually results in deaths like these. If I reach 50,000 attempts, I have to give this guy $1,000. Nah, bro, there's no way you're gonna beat this challenge. Like, it just straight up sounds impossible. Well, every main level happened to be impossible, except Polar Geist. This level only had one easy ship part, which required me to jump over a few blocks. Going into the online realm, since Polar Geist was my only lead, I decided on playing every level with the song Polar Geist. If they take enough inspiration from this banger, then maybe I can beat them. Out of the 183 rated Polar Geist levels, I was only able to beat 7. Now I have 31 stars, only 969 more stars to go. Why do I force myself to do this? My next idea was to search up Wave. I unintentionally found this level Wave the Galaxy. After passing this icon part, what was normally meant to be a ship part was actually a secret way. After checking a ton of other levels, I would find secret ways in Door Bay Basic 5, Bloom, and Demon Park. This is the first demon and it was hardly possible. I had a hold with my icon to give my second jump a slight boost, making this normally impossible jump possible. I kept going and instead of going through this gravity ball part, I fell into a secret way. I wasn't out of the clear yet though. You see this block here? There was zero reason for M2 Cole to place that block in the editor 8 years ago, but for the first time in Geometry Dash history, it would actually be used. I was able to briefly get back into the main route and sneak right under this spike gap to complete my first demon. I would have to be creative with my skips. In Cap Kingdom, there's this normally robot part where you just jump on the edge of these blocks rather than holding. Then there's this boss fight. The first target is obviously impossible to get, but with a precise jump, the second target is possible and the third target is automatic. After eliminating this fun specimen, I decided to check every single easy rated level in the game. I had no other ideas. Even though these were 2 stars, over 90% of them were still impossible for my cube to complete. There were levels with pretty easy secret ways, some didn't even require a click. There were also a few levels which were either entirely cube only anyways or hardly contained a ship. Although there were some interesting ones. In Tragic End, I kept getting killed by a mysterious roof. After some investigation, I realized that a precise timing would be needed to race to the finish. In Varying Christmas, I don't know why, but the creator decided to randomly put 47 triple spike jumps in a row for anyone unfortunate enough to make it to the bottom of the level, which shouldn't even be possible if you're playing normally. Eh, whatever, free two stars, am I right? In air, I shifted below the level, but in order to avoid dying to a future wall, I had to get back into the level to finish it normally. Well, as normal as Icon only gameplay gets, at least. In Mystical Forest, I hopped over some gems and skipped the rest of the level. Goodbye would have been impossible if the creator didn't implement a generous health bar system. I still died to parts that were meant to be auto. While there was still some difficult deaths, I was eventually able to make my way to Mercy, a level where I had to precisely jump from structure to structure in order to avoid the void. Some other levels would have been way harder if the creator didn't make pretty much every part automatic. Monody should actually be impossible for my icon because of this orange pad, but for some reason the creator decided to make these spikes friendly. We take those. I don't even know how it's possible to die in app 2. I disobeyed all the directions, and yet, I was chillin'. This was nice and all, but there were three final easy levels that I had to beat which had demon level timings. Chronology was terrible. There was this blind jump into the first ship part and I had to precisely jump over certain structures and slip right in the middle of these invisible lines. In the last half of the level, I couldn't afford a single mistake. I had to know what to jump over or if there was an invisible blue pad somewhere because honestly, it felt randomized. Then there was Loth, a level which is pretty much auto until I had to do this frame perfect clip into this structure. The final easy level I had to face was Gloomy Forest, which required me to go through this weird coin route to jump over what would normally be an impossible gap in the main route. Now I have to go through over 1000 normal levels and as you may expect over 90% of them were impossible. This is gonna be interesting. In Time Machine Easy I was able to jump over all of these rockets. During Felix I had to jump on the edge of this structure to get to the next part. The riding on the whale and clicking on square orb part wasn't too bad. And now that's good sync everything was fine until I got trolled. I beat it the next attempt though. In Elemental Power I just had to do a few jumps and watch these two cubes have an epic battle to the death. Bruh. Boom Plus was interesting because without this coin route the level would have been impossible. The issue is there was an invisible wall at 96. However, I remember that there was an odd set of blue pads that were were probably misplaced and still remaining when the level was uploaded. By hitting this blue pad and jumping over these blocks, I was just about able to secure Boom Plus's stars. Endings was free aside from this one difficult jump. 
Entering the void, I got real lucky with these hitboxes. After a streak of easy secret ways, I was about to confront my greatest challenge yet. Stuff I used was an extremely slow level and the ship part unintentionally contained some really difficult jumps. It only gets worse from here. Playing normally in Celestial, you'd think to jump to the next structure, but it turns out that taking a brief dip in the lava lake is the more appealing option. After escaping the secret base, I had to rematch Jeff in Dash Fighters. Jeff was able to slay the ninja, and I realized my issue. I was trying way too hard to strategize in this match. Really, all I had to do was pick the boxer with the highest attack stat and smash. In choices, I obviously chose the easy route and went through the secret way. After getting some useless items in the vault, I was able to go through some secret ways. I thought reach would be like the others until I faced an invisible wall. At least that's what I thought, but in reality, I had to precisely time a jump to get to the end screen. Now, Destination Utopia is already pretty hard for a 3-star, but with Icon only, it's brutal. I had to do a very precise input to get over this structure. There was an invisible wall at 73, but if I held before the part started and got lucky, I was able to land on a cloud and make it to the final destination. In this ancient adventure, I have to quote-unquote collect the keys to success. Or do absolutely nothing. Hope that didn't hurt too much for this guy. In last one, I clipped into the structure which you'd think was a block design because of the black background, but no, it's just empty with layout lines. The rest wasn't too difficult, and over the horizon these clouds have tiny hitboxes. Luckily, they are tiny enough that I can slip through them. After beating Shale in Limbo, I would find a somewhat promising lead. Super Mario Bros. levels. Yeah! While some were impossible, I was able to complete a few. I finished off the normal difficulty with several basic looking levels and my star count was still under 400. Now there are 600 auto levels, but unlike in the no jump video, most of these are still impossible, usually because of different physics between game modes. Ironically, the first possible auto I found was cannon, which is one of the few remaining auto levels where you have to jump to complete it normally. So my long and exhausting grind of auto levels began. During this time, I realized I had a major problem on my hands. Even if I checked through all of them, I still wouldn't have 1000 stars and I'd eventually be forced into investigating far harder levels. At least the auto level grind distracted me from my inevitable doom. During this time, I had a interesting experience with lip sync monody. <laughs> Mr. Gone is a story about this dude and his dog that live a peaceful and quiet life until, boom, dude dies in the hospital. Truly a sad fate. Okay, this is just a messed up thing to put on a gravestone. Guess what happens to his dog? Yeah, I haven't seen a story this sad in a GD level since. Wow. Anyways, I beat Anslide, which is the only automatic 6 star map. For your microbiome, I was able to phase through the hitboxes of these structures. I was surprised to find out that I didn't have no clip enabled. After jumping over what's meant to be gravity ball gaps, I went fishing. This level is further proof that every perfect game has to have a fishing minigame. After going through this saw, once again not no clip, I got into a car and I fueled up for an epic race. Who needs NASCAR when you have Geometry Dash? I won the race, obviously, but I came to the quick realization that it could quite possibly be my final victory. To my knowledge, all of the easy levels had been eliminated and I still had over 400 stars that needed to be collected to win the challenge. With no way out, I folded under the pressure. If you don't get the rest of those scars, bro, the 1k is in my bag. I quit the challenge for months, feeling hopeless. Until I realized what helped me succeed in my previous 1000 star challenge wasn't just the autos. It was also a bot that scanned specific levels in the server to help me advance. After asking many coders and getting denied, I found GD Colon, who came up with an interesting solution. By tracking the amount of portals in every rated level, he created a list applying a danger value to each level. The maps with a score of 0 are a breeze, with the gameplay only consisting of a cube. While on the other hand, almost everything above 20 was practically impossible. As I began grinding, I wasn't sure if even the list could save me from my misery. Sure, there were some low scores, but danger scores as low as 5 tended to make the level impossible. Luckily, I was able to get dozens of stars from old levels since Cube used to be one of the only game modes back then. For some odd reason, there were also 4 dinosaur themed levels that only used the cube. This part in Cretaceous route could have totally been a gravity ball, but the creator clutched up and made it a gravity flipping icon. I even got easy stars from the no internet dinosaur. After hopping over T-Rexes, I entered Quantum Heaven. Yeah, this stuff looks worse than Discord Light Mode. Luckily, there's a low detail mode key which saved me from being blinded. During this journey, I commonly had to control things that didn't look like a cube, like this penguin, this slime, and this emo kid. 
The levels only got harder after I reached 700 stars. Mirror had a ton of memory segments forcing me to pause every second like I was Paco verifying Silent Club Step. No level I faced up to this point could prepare me for heaven. A ripoff of the impossible game that only has cube gameplay. This sounds like it'd be free stars, but it was the hardest level yet. These blocks fell down too early. These blocks appeared too late. After 100 attempts, I quit this level, feeling defeated. The next few levels I completed didn't feel satisfying, and I was running out of normal levels to play. But luckily, there's still a truckload of minigame levels. First was Boxfall. At first it was extremely difficult, but shortly after doubting that it was possible, I fluked the victory. After lasering monsters, dodging asteroids, and destroying the final boss in an epic space fight, I entered Wizard Kill, which contains so much interesting lore. Skip pretty much, I gotta beat this dude up to get the ultimate drippy chain. At first he was destroying me, but then I came up with the perfect strategy to own the fraud. Spamming. In mobility, I had to be patient in order to not get crushed and make it to the ending. After a few rounds of mini golf, I played knife hit. Luckily, I'm a knife throwing professional, world renowned for my knife throwing ability, I guess. Then I was hired to spend one night at Rob Tops. I'm not gonna lie, this was actually scary. Instead of actually trying to outsmart the animatronics, I just looked at the top comment and followed the directions. Classic Matt Mart behavior, I know. After hitting 800 stars, I finally returned to somewhat normal Geometry Dash maps. It felt great until I encountered Platform Adventure, which nearly made me quit everything. This level was terribly made. Despite me not hitting the keys here, I would end up dying a lot to these awful trigger hitboxes. This last part was barely possible and after all of this ahead of me was the worst obstacle i had faced in eight years of playing geometry dash this godforsaken box it's only possible if i precisely jump beforehand and increase the height of my second jump so that i dodge the hitbox by a few pixels i proceeded to spend hours and hours dying to mostly stupid things platform adventure demoralized me and i quit trying to beat it after this L, I needed some W's, so I went to Alcove, which may look tricky, but these spikes are as tiny as they look, so I was fine. After playing some of the worst levels for hours on end, I was finally able to catch a break. Despite the level being a demon, Starquake only had cube gameplay. By using my past experience, I seized 10 new stars with ease. Unfortunately, Oncove wasn't so easy. By the end of this level, this object representing my icon tended to become very inaccurate, so I was forced to play by instinct. After my space expedition, I played Limbo. No worries, it's just a 3 star, but a very sad one to look at. Not as sad as alone. This woman just leaves me, and I spent the rest of the level traveling through different environments just to get a girl. She better be a baddie. Sheesh! Next, I would spend over 10 minutes getting humiliated by a tic-tac-toe computer. Sure, I got my two stars for now, but if the singularity ever happens, I'm losing to the tic-tac-toe AI first. At least I passed Dorbe Quiz, where I proved my reading ability by copying the directions of the top comments. The spike is over there! Just kidding, it isn't. This level constantly tries to fool you with a song made just for the level, but nothing can fool me if I use the power of the top comment. After cheating a questionable amount of times, I was forced to return to minigames. Sadly, after being destroyed by Glass Joe, I went to Axe Fight, where guess what I did? That's right, fight with axes. Except not really. After destroying a few NPCs, I picked up this double-bladed sword. Very nice looking axe as you can see. After many hard fought battles, I finally survived. What I had a harder time surviving was Agario, a game which I'm historically not very good oh, at. Oh, 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 da, 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 da. No! The timer for this level was more annoying than the viruses. Eventually I won and went out alpine skiing. Towards the bottom of the mountain, the level became extremely fast. The only thing saving my completion were the several lives I had. Soon, I would have to go on my longest journey yet. Master Game is the ultimate minigame level. It's an entire RPG made in Geometry Dash that would take hours for a normal person to beat. But I'm no simpleton. After looking at the comments, entering the passcode, and barely beating the evil penguin boss, I added a third demon to my collection. Next, I had to play some difficult auto levels. Animation Rift 3 was weird. If I did nothing after this part with blue pads, I'd end up face to face with an unavoidable wall. By using a mod to study the hitboxes of these segments, I was able to memorize the invisible slopes on my next run, and carefully jump over the gaps. For the Lion City, I had to remember two pads that were particularly deadly because of icon physics. Fortunately, I was able to take a break and watch a few animations. 900 stars, only 100 more to go. While my journey was close to ending, the levels that I had to beat were only gonna get harder and harder. I couldn't understand its strength, which forced me to watch a YouTube video and follow the route perfectly. 
at this point skipping levels wasn't an option as it would risk me playing far worse levels in the high danger tier. After chopping a lot of wood in Timberman, I was forced to re-enter the boxing ring. For years, I was never even able to beat Glass Joe, but this time I decided to study all of his attack patterns. These health bars are misleading. The biggest threat is actually the timer. After getting bodied a ton of times, I channeled all of my Smash Bros skill and annihilated Glass Joe. The next fighter would be Bald Bull, who was way tougher. For hours, I struggled to finish him off, but on one lucky attempt, I got to Bald Bull's final attack. I perfectly timed this hit and KO punched Bald Bull out of the arena. My time in the ring taught me that no candy was quite sweeter than revenge. I thought about it and realized that I couldn't truly beat the Icon Only Challenge without first beating my inner demons. I was ready for hell, so I returned to heaven. With my past experience, I actually memorized most of the traps, allowing for a much easier completion. This was my most satisfying victory yet, primarily because this level features a lot of triple spikes. The most famous way of testing your skill as a cube. To become a cube master, I would not only have to get 1000 stars, but I'd also have to become a master of the triple spike jump. I began the end of my journey by beating Spike Spike Spike, 980 stars. Then I got two more stars in the double triple trial, 982 stars. After entering the triple trial, I had to jump over 50 triple spikes in a row, 990 stars. 10 more to go. This is Trip, an insane demon. If I was a top player, this would be one of the easiest parts of the video. But I'm Atmar, a guy who's never beaten an extreme demon. This was an intimidating challenge, but I knew I couldn't end this video another way, so I spent thousands of attempts grinding. If you're somehow able to get through all these crazy timings, you still have to beat the final two jumps. First is a 6 spike jump from Dejoxy. My strategy for this was pre-jumping in the middle of the O. Then, the final jump was created by Michigan, an extended triple spike. I realized I had to keep going, if not for myself, then for my subscribers. And especially my members. YES! YES! <laughs> After 8 months, it's finally done. 1,000 stars, more shiny! Let's f***ing go! Dude, you actually like have like no life. I have no clue how you just did that. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it was actually possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.